HRN welcomes you back for exciting week three racing. And as you see laid out before you, week three will feature the first four wheel drive vehicles that we have seen thus far in the summer series. And before we get too far, a little bit of a change to the way we're gonna do things. We're gonna keep track of two separate racing divisions. The one division will be the ready to run division and the other one will be the kit based division. So these two here will be the first two applicants racing from the kit division. And who knows, maybe at the end of the season, we'll take the top one or two from each division, have them go head to head for a true championship. But I thought to keep things on a little bit more of an even keel, we would switch it up into divisions. So the cars for today, on your left, the Tamiya St. Dragon. This car completely stock, minus outfitted with ball bearings throughout. It is running a stock silver can Mabuchi motor. On the right, the Kyosho Javelin. The same motor resides in that car, a 540 size Mabuchi motor as well. Both cars will also be running 2000 milliamp hour, 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride batteries, trying to keep it as even as possible. Who will win? I think I gotta take the Javelin. But what are your thoughts? Keep watching to find out. Week three weather and track condition report. Plenty of sunshine on tap on yet another breezy hot day at Windy Hill Raceway. Track conditions itself, very dry. Not much rain at all in the area. The last several weeks has led the course to become very dry, very loose. Most likely the cars are gonna have a hard time hooking up today. Today's race sponsor is, I can't believe it's lawn clippings, plant-based burgers. If you want a burger that you can feel good about, look no further than underneath our mower decks. It's, I can't believe it's lawn clippings, plant-based burgers. Post-race car impressions. First off, the Tamiya St. Dragon I thought got around the track very well, especially considering the dry, arid conditions. Uh, going around that back stretch for that back turn to where you hit the start-finish line, I had it almost pegged all the way. Just a little bit of slippage going around that back end there, so I had to be careful about that. But overall, I thought the car handled the course very well. Coming into that tight right-hand turn to face off against the jump, I thought it made that turn very well. Like the St. Dragon before it, the Javelin got around the course pretty darn well too. Uh, heading around that back stretch towards the start finish line, I was able to keep the throttle pegged every time as, as a car topped out, but it didn't lose any tire grip. I think overall the Javelin might be a touch slower, but the softer tires and being able to just go full throttle really helped it get around the course. Which one of these two cars won? Well, find out at the end of the video, it was a very close finish. Wow, was that a close one. Our closest race so far through the first three weeks. 
First up, we saw the St. Dragon finish with a fastest lap of 9.87 seconds with an average of 10.43. Taking a look at the Javelin, 9.80 was its fastest lap, meaning that the Javelin beat out the St. Dragon in this head-to-head -head by 7 one hundredths of a second, an average of 10.18 seconds. So, after the first kit division race, we'll see the Javelin sit at number one, followed by the St. Dragon at number two. So we'll flip-flop these around. I think for week number four, we'll do another kit division race to keep things evened up as we go. And uh, that's going to do it. Uh, certainly a very exciting race today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, as always, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to watch my videos until the next race, keep all four wheels on the ground, stay safe.